what point is it fair to call the color red maroon? How many grains of sand do we have to add in order to qualify it as a heap? How many hairs does a man have to lose in order to be called bald? We share more than 60% of our genetic code with bananas. At what point can we safely call a banana more human than a banana? Are we 60% bananas or are bananas 60% humans? Are we different from chimps in terms of degree of consciousness or category? Is, is our ability to reason merely better or is it of a different kind altogether? Which box in this illustration is darker in your opinion? Which monster is bigger? If a coffee and a biscuit costs $1.10 combined and the coffee costs $1 more than the price of the biscuit, how much does the biscuit cost? How much does the coffee cost? There's an intuitive answer to that and if you went with it then you're wrong because biscuit does not cost 10 cents because if it did then the price of the coffee would be one dollar more than that which would bring the grand total to 1.20 i know you can try say roger federer has reached wimbledon final again against rafa which of the following do you think will be the most likely outcome of the match roger federer will win the match roger federer will lose the match Roger Federer will lose the first set but will win the match and Roger Federer will win the first set but lose the match. Uh, in a similar study conducted, 72% of the people thought option 3 was the most likeliest option. And what's remarkable about this output is that when we have two propositions, the conjunction of the two cannot be more probable than the two taken separately. So Roger either winning the whole match or losing the match is more probable than the two combined, uh, which is winning the first set and losing the match or losing the first set or winning the match. And this is known as conjunction fallacy. Now, whether we believe we are exclusively endowed with the faculty of reason or it evolved over time, it is quite evident that this extraordinary ability is flawed. Psychology hasn't left any doubts over that. We have come far though, we have defeated dogma with a new dogma that our reason, specifically logical reasoning, primarily in its empirical manifestation is objective reality. Nothing except reason can bring us all together for it is the only method which is definitive and free of subjectivity. And gone are the days when personal experience meant anything or any modicum of knowledge could be extracted from it. The pre Darwinian, more specifically pre-Freudian darkness which besieged our understanding of the world and ourselves has been lifted with our advancement in science and technology. If we cannot reach the conclusion we ought to reach, then it's simply because we have not applied reason reasonably. Just some more of that reason and we shall reach the reasonable conclusion and everything shall be settled. One of the more interesting features about human consciousness is the fact that it is both a subject as well as the object. Our idea of self is simply a consciousness of our consciousness. Our mind can reference itself and not run into contradictions. We can think about thinking while we were thinking and reminisce that we were thinking and recall the conclusions. We can read faces, interpret body language. We can tell if a person is sad or happy by the tone of their voice. Our inferences about Others are surprisingly insightful. Our inferences about our own selves are mostly terrible. The whole world of unconscious where dreams reside, which drives our decisions, where biases are manufactured, we have no direct introspective knowledge of. We make bad decisions all the time. We're hasty. We buy things that we don't need, but things that we, that we want. We're thinking beings, but we're not engaged in uber logical discourse 24 hours a day. We make thousands of little inferences every day, but we don't sit and analyze all of them. The Arab scientist Ibn al-Haytham is probably one of the earliest to delve into the world of unconscious. Before Jung or Freud for that matter, he wondered if we use the same method for drawing inferences in both the daily trivial automatic inferences and deep logical methodical thinking. He concluded that each form of inference uses the same conscious method except that it becomes second nature because of reputation. 
This, however, does not exactly hold true when we consider infants and their behaviors. They should first be observed performing deep and conscious acts of drawing inferences before it becomes unconscious and automatic. That is not the case. We don't see babies engaged in such activities. They cry and poop. So let us examine reason itself, shall we? Let us analyze its limitations. Let us visit the Holy Land, the place where dogma is shattered and sense prevails, the place where gods fall and void takes over, the place where something can be made out of nothing, the place where biases don't exist and sinless elvish prophets indulge in the mystic acts of exploring the cosmos the realm of reason, the polemic for the educated. Why, you might ask? Well, because we can.